Organic chemists love synthetic methods that establish new carbon-carbon bonds, and one electrophile that we haven't really yet explored is the possibility of using carbocations in electrophilic aromatic substitutions. The resulting reactions would create a new carbon-carbon bond between an alkyl group associated with the carbocation and an aromatic ring. That's a highly useful synthetic process. This is the idea behind friedel crafts alkylation in which the key electrophile, the active electrophile as we've called it, is a carbocation. This is a double-edged sword. It's nice because of the creation of carbon-carbon bond, but it has some drawbacks, which we'll explore in this video. Additionally, this is really the first case we've seen where the substituent that's added is now a net electron donating group due to the inductive or hyperconjugative effect of the alkyl group. That creates potential problems for electrophilic aromatic substitution, since the product will be more reactive in reactions involving the ring as a nucleophile, such as EAS, than the starting material. The possibility then of polyalkylation becomes a problem with multiple R groups being added when we don't want them. Let's first take a step back and talk about the mechanism of friedel crafts alkylation. The active electrophile in friedel crafts alkylation is generated actually through a mechanism that's analogous to halogenation with a little bit of extra flair. Just as in halogenation, a Lewis acidic catalyst is required in this reaction. And in the first step, very similar to, for example, chlorination that we explored in a previous video, the formation of a complex occurs between chlorine as a Lewis base and aluminum as a Lewis acid. Provided that the R group can support positive charge, in other words, provided that R is not primary or methyl, departure of the positively charged chlorine as a leaving group can generate a carbocation. And so when R is not a primary carbon, we see the formation of carbocations. When R is primary though, this complex can still react in friedel crafts alkylations. And so we still can use primary electrophiles in friedel crafts alkylations, although these have an issue that we'll address later in this video. And so in general, the active electrophile here is a carbocation, such as R+, but in the primary case, the active electrophile is this Lewis base, Lewis acid complex between the alkyl halide and AlCl3. To show the rest of this mechanism, I'm going to focus on R+, as the electrophile. And by now, we should be very familiar with the general pattern of reactivity in EAS reactions. A pair of pi electrons in the aromatic first coordinates to the electrophile in an A sub E step generating a non-aromatic sigma complex containing positive charge. From here, a Bronsted base can remove this proton to restore aromaticity and give the final product. And the best Bronsted base in this case is the AlCl4- anion, just as we saw in halogenations. Transfer of a proton to chlorine in this intermediate restores aromaticity and generates HCl and AlCl3, showing that AlCl3 can be used in catalytic quantities in this reaction. What we just saw was using a Lewis acid, AlCl3, to essentially help pull off the chlorine from an alkyl chloride. But there are other methods that we've seen for generating carbocations, and these can also be used as precursors to friedel crafts alkylation processes. So for example, consider the reaction shown here. We can see that this is a friedel crafts type process if we recognize that a new bond has been created between a carbon of the aromatic ring and a carbon of this alkyl chain, this chain of carbons. What must have happened then is that at some point positive charge was developed on this carbon. And if we look at the reagent used, H2SO4, and what else is happening in the substrate, we can understand how this happened. H2SO4 is a strong acid. This means that it's capable of protonating alkenes, and we've seen this, for example, in acid-catalyzed hydration reactions, where sulfuric acid's purpose in life is to protonate an alkene to create a carbocation intermediate. This will occur in a Markovnikov-type fashion, and so this carbocation intermediate, which I'm labeling A, is going to be a secondary carbocation, rather than a primary carbocation. And of course, from here, we have all the ingredients we need for friedel crafts alkylation. The active electrophile in the form of a positively charged carbon atom, and an aromatic ring that's primed and ready to attack that cation. Association of the cation to the ring closes the five-membered ring, and then loss of a proton restores aromaticity to give the final product. 
Notice that this creates a stereo center, but we should expect a racemic mixture of configurations since approach of the aromatic to either the top or bottom face of this cation will occur with equal probability. Cargo cations can also be generated from alcohols through proton-mediated processes again. Under these reaction conditions, we should expect the strong acid H2SO4 to protonate the alcohol. Doing this leaves us with an intermediate that's poised to form a carbocation through the loss of water. From here, Friedel Crafts alkylation with this tartbutyl cation leads to the observed product through a straightforward Friedel Crafts alkylation mechanism. The unique aspect of this mechanism is that instead of using an alkyl halide together with AlCl3, we're using an alcohol together with a Bronsted acid. But actually the electron flows in the general idea of activating something as a leaving group so that it leaves a carbon, making that carbon electrophilic, is the same in both cases, whether we use an alkyl halide and AlCl3, or an alcohol and a strong acid like H2SO4. The reaction scheme shown on this slide shows us an interesting result. We would expect the two reagents shown here to combine to produce a complex that looks like this. And although this isn't expected to give a carbocation, we would still be led to believe that this could react in Friedel Crafts reaction through electron flow like this, leading to propyl benzene, benzene substituted with this linear three carbon propyl group. However, this isn't the major product. This is only 45% of what we observe. Most of what we observe contains an entirely different alkyl group within the substrate, the isopropyl group. Where on earth does this isopropyl substituted benzene come from? How did we get a carbocation on the secondary position within the starting alkyl halide? Well, let's carefully consider this complex again. I'm going to redraw it below. Although this Lewis structure shows an intact bond between the carbon and chlorine, there's actually a decent resonance structure of this molecule that shows that the positive charge is shared to a large degree by the carbon atom. This isn't reactivity, as I'm showing using this double-headed arrow, but the point is that this alternative resonance form with positive charge in the primary carbon is important to the structure of this complex. These resonance forms also help us understand why one-two rearrangements are possible in this complex. And you've really got to watch out for one-two rearrangements in Friedel Crafts alkylations. The key is to pay attention to the complex involved and assess the possibility of one-two rearrangement in that intermediate complex or in a carbocation. In this particular case, one-two rearrangement of this primary sort of cation with a large degree of partial positive charge on the carbon atom would convert the complex into a secondary carbocation. And using the resonance structure on the left, the electron flow would look something like this. This one-two rearrangement elementary step produces a new cation entirely with positive charge on the secondary carbon and two methyl groups. At this point, we can see where the isopropyl benzene came from. It came from reaction of this rearranged secondary cation with the aromatic ring rather than the original primary complex. Because the rearrangement is both very rapid and thermodynamically favored, it should be unsurprising that the major product is derived from the rearranged cation rather than the original complex. And in fact, this selectivity is relatively low only because of the low reaction temperature here. If this reaction temperature were raised to 20 degrees C, we would see a much greater selectivity for the thermodynamic product, if you will, derived from reaction of the more stable rearranged cation. 